property that you really specify itself and you suppose you really just kind of uh, customize or really style that paragraph itself would really like to intercept that uh, property itself with another page itself and you really don't want to really mess up the uh, other page styling itself by really just kind of getting through it and personally it really took me a time itself to really just try to gain to get off accurate Okay, we are now at the right pace itself and just kind of really give you a brief nuance and brief scenario about what we are really going to discuss about uh, like after the introspection of really just kind of about the previous video itself. In the previous video of what I have learned in React, it was around 36 minutes, you know, that was my one of the biggest video ever that I have made. Uh, in that video, I really uh, just kind of uh, just put the statement of uh, what the problem I face with CSS itself and and what really uh, you can how you can prevent it and what's the best way of doing all that things so like what is the best way of uh, like doing things with CSS itself what are the best practices what are the best units itself and it's just a kind of an overview and the brief scenario that I really want to share my experience about it now one thing i really want to sh tell you that i'm not a css guru or expert in by any far of the me so what i have really made up to right now about the face match itself so i have really completed right now the form itself and i'm really working on the aws thing to really kind of authenticate and stuff all that thing so up to right now what i have really done in the front end itself and what problems i really faced in the css thing by using css in the react itself I just want to emphasize and kind of really share it to you now I really assume so if you are really if you are really watching my video right now and if you're watching this video particularly instance I really assume that you know uh, some of the basic things of the react itself some of the things that you really understand about the CSS itself what it is and what it's not so without any wasting time let's continue on to the discussion itself. so what is the best way of coming out the things and really implementing the design itself what are the best units it's uh, what should we use like whether it should be pixel whether it should be vh whether it should be something or something else like that so like in the briefly describe uh, briefly describe itself so if we really categorize the css itself so it can be basically divided into the two sections so first one is absolute and the first second one is relative now what do you mean by absolute and the relative uh, units itself so the absolute unit is something which doesn't change it doesn't give any <laughs> sorry i like i just want to give it doesn't really give any some sort of uh, damn to uh, like any browser responsiveness it doesn't give any damn to like uh, any like font responsiveness and it doesn't really give any shit to it and the response and the relative while they're on the alternate hand it really just kind of adapts of according to the your own preference setting of the font size setting itself so when you go on to the uh, like mobile itself so the font size is generally less as compared to the desktop size because as usually you know the surface area is less and the screen display so obviously we want as as much as information packed down yeah. the compact size itself so yeah so there are there is one absolute and the second one is relative itself so and when should you really use absolute versus relative itself so we can really just so i have just explained what can be what is absolute versus what is relative itself and the travis from the dev tip itself has really elaborated in the much more detail i will give it in the link this in the card below right here sorry yeah somewhere right here yeah so you can just check that out and yeah you can really learn really cool things out there itself so but even though if you really learn that chances are you will really just kind of stuck into it and you really question yourself it's is it so why there are so much units out there and which CSS units should i really use so as i've really told that you know the briefly like it can be elaborated into the two sections itself so one is absolute one is relative so and from let's talk with the absolute itself so in absolute and uh, like the font the css units like pixels and centimeters inches millimeter itself so these are the 
particle itself now in the relative itself so there is called rem that is rem there is vh viewport height that is fractions that is like some of the other else but uh, if you are a regular developer itself you and we will just focus on to this three uh, to this major aspect itself that is pixels m rem vh and viewport width itself that is the five things itself so so out of these five things out there i have just explained you the three things that is necessary out there so the first one the, the relative unit which uh, i have obviously told that is rem second one is vh that is viewport height and third one is viewport width now these let's talk about when you should use the viewport sorry when should you use the uh, rem unit now rem unit is especially uh, like helpful in while making in really using the font size really adjustable it's so if you really just kind of like set to the fonts set the font size to the only pixel itself which just and you it just really adjust to only that fixed size itself so let's take a scenario itself when you are really uh, working on like any development in the front end ui project itself so if you take a uh, pixel for the font size itself which is a relative itself so now you now on the desktop itself you have used the font size to the xy uh, like one pixel two pixel three pixel itself that is fine but what will happen if that same size will really just kind of go through the pixel through, through that the mobile user it will not really get adapted itself and it will really just look like the bloated itself the fast thing itself and you really don't want that you really want that the font size should be responsive itself and the rem unit just provides that itself so can you use that rem unit to everyone out there yes absolutely you can that css units you can use everywhere wherever the hell you want but you know the rem unit is especially suited for the font adjustment or the font size itself so and it just automatically gets adjusted so if you are on the desktop and you really set something around 4 rem 5 rem and it and you when you just go on to the mobile size itself it automatically scales down itself so the normal adjusting itself so it's just a kind of thing that you should really take care about second one and the third one itself which mm -hmm. i'm really uh, viewport height and viewport width now be cautious about it these are the two really tricky units out there you will really find a lot of tutorials uh, using this uh, using these two units out there so and just kind of thing that they will just preach out there like hey, use vh use w yeah blah blah blah, blah. But these these two units can really make or break your project itself. So never make a form, never make a HTML login form or the fixed size element which you want really a uniform with just a VH or viewport height itself. It requires a lot of media queries to optimize itself into the horizontal position and to the media size position itself. And if you really want background size to be really taken to the full uh, full height of the media, full height of the screen available size itself, at that moment, the VH and the viewport height, viewport width is really helpful for you. And other than that, I have not, I never found any case that it could really help you a lot. Uh, in case some such like, so if you only really want to make, like as as I said in the form. If you really make form just by using VH itself, now particularly along the horizontal thing itself, it really looks fine. But when a mobile user, even it will just flip the screen, everything will really look squashed itself. So and which and this is something which I have really also uh, showcased on my previous video itself. So link is right above in the corner. You can check that out. And yeah, so it's like yeah, so you should really uh, consider that thing. You should really only use VH or viewport width to just kind of adjust the background image size to the whole screen or to the half screen, whatever you really want. And and really, it really takes a lot of things to adjust the media query itself. So be cautious. Talking about the absolute unit, that is pixels and the M's. Generally, M is equal to EM is equal to 16 pixels itself. So uh both are absolutely the same but when we let's talk about pixel because ultimately the m is dependent on the pixel itself so makes sense yeah so if you really want something to appear really uniform itself across every cross section out there every browser uh like whether it should be desktop whether it should be like 
mobile user whether it's tablet or any like smart tv itself you really if you really want it to just kind of uh, go on and appear really like a uh, symmetrical it really looks should really fixed uh, size itself then the pixel is a various thing pixel is a really good thing it can be it is really easily media it can be really optimized easily with the media query itself and you don't have to really worry about anything much more else because and majority of the time you will really also end up in using the pixel itself but it really just kind of give you and comfort and emphasize like it still really questions a lot which one should you use and the answer is practice 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 that is the only key i know it's really like a cliche thing but when you will really practice when you really optimize you will really automatically get the zest about it like what should i use and what should i really avoid at certain instances in certain uh, in a certain scenario itself and talking about the problems that i have really faced in react with sir right which was the kind of intro about it so talking about it's like you know the react i really don't know why they really introduced the concept of really importing the css styling itself when when the css interference is a kind of a thing which I really didn't know, and and I really just almost left my project to kind of it was about to mess and it was about to chaos. So I think yes, I am really going into the complicated thing. Let me just simplify it for yourself. Now let's imagine if you are really developing a website itself. Each website has its three main components. Sir. One is CSS, one is HTML file, one is second is JavaScript file and third is CSS file itself. What you will do right now? So if you really want to really just kind of uh, embed the styling itself, then there are two things itself. One is inline styling and one then there is second one is like kind of a, like we really specify a file of CSS style and you really just kind of style in, into that. And if you really follow the coding practices, if you really follow and every bunch of other thing itself, then you will really know that the uh, that the second approach is kind of better for you and there is kind of really gets so much good and we can really just adjust uh, it's so much better and it just kind of looks great it doesn't look that much more ugly itself so yeah I thought I should use the separate CSS file itself and it will really boom work yeah but it does not work that way it should work now let me give you a brief scenario itself which I have really just kind of get you in my previous video itself. Now let's suppose you have a page one like index.html itself. That index.html has a CSS file of right index.css itself. And the second thing is like home.css. Sorry, home.html and that home.html has a file of uh, let's say home.css itself, right? Now whatever you do in the uh, CSS file with the index html it will not it will never interfere with the css or home dot html page itself right makes sense because we have embedded both in the separate file itself and it should work like separate itself but react is not the case itself react is such a thing that they should really work itself so i really kind of don't understand like why they haven't really just take this consideration that if you really can't get through it now what I really take suppose uh, when I was really working on my project itself so one thing that I have really noticed when I was designing a button about the pink pink button the black button cell which you can check on my site itself link is always in the description and when I was making that button itself I was just kind of uh, getting through it and error itself it was just interfering itself my into the styling itself so let's take an hypothetical an example itself you make a react component you specify a style itself you really import a style component you really imported a styling file itself into that specific component itself and you also made an another component itself which is totally irrelevant to the first one itself and you really also specify an another uh, styling file itself into that second component itself um, i hope it not gets complicated yeah i'm really trying my best to explain it yeah so yeah so and if you really design a button with a class of button itself and you really design a specific style let's suppose uh, like height is equal to 50 pixel 
width is equal to 70 pixels and color background color black itself right now if you really design if you go onto the second page itself and you really design a button now naturally that button should have an empty thing right but no this time itself what will really happen is something like the css property from the first uh, page itself will really kind of interfere with the second thing itself now why this is happens even i don't know like i have never found something like which is really really absurd like something like this itself and this is something which is really kind of tricky itself and to really just kind of and figure out in the advance itself so what i really did is to really just kind of i was i did end up in using a different class tag itself to and then it really just kind of hey you have not style it then you should really style itself so in the first page it was like button class is equal to button and then in the second page when i really just took up the like button class is equal to button 2 then i was able to really kind of style it into the much more different way itself and no matter if you really like if you don't want a css bleeding or the css interference itself use the separate css class itself so that it will really help you to really maintain and to really fail, uh, like facilitate you to kind of style it into the really into your own manner itself so like this was it i just want to tell like what is the best css unit what was the kind of thing that i really went through and like what was this like how, what was my experience with it and just kind of bunch of other thing itself like yeah and so so this was it guys i really want to just tell you that i what i've really faced a my challenge itself what were the news complete itself so uh, today's video was not really that good itself i am in my opinion uh yeah and the tomorrow's or the sorry the next video that i'll be really uploading is like so what what are the really challenges out there um in dealing with the aws uh, ecosystem out there and i have really chose the serverless why the detail analysis is really coming to it's really coming soon and it is really gonna be awesome so and it trust me it's when you guys see awesome it is gonna really be awesome itself right okay that was really arrogant itself so yeah and i'm really gonna be giving a detailed analysis itself about uh what was my decision regarding the serverless what are the things what are the data validation what are the stuff and and why i haven't really uploaded like any boring video or something like that in just one and a half week itself so till then stay connected stay subscribed to my channel and see you next time and have a good day